Imperial War Museum's base at Duxford has more historic vintage aircraft and flying them than probably anywhere else in Europe. It's known for its tributes to the past, but today it's going to be a tribute to the future. And this is the very place where Frank Whittle learned to fly, and look what happened then. Well, this is even more exciting, as it's now the home of the world's first bioelectric hybrid aircraft that's going to be flying regional passengers and cargo. So Neil Cluffy, the founder and CEO of Farad Air, it's been a bit of a journey getting here, but now it's really happening. Just tell us again about Biha. Well, basically, having worked in the commercial aircraft market for many years, uh, we saw an opportunity where the regional market has struggled on tradition. Uh, we've seen a, a lot of difficulty for regional carriers. And with the new technologies that are coming available, then we can see a fantastic opportunity to bring in uh, a regional aircraft again, much like we used to do in the 1930s. So when we came together to form Faraday in 2014, six years ago now, we came up with this idea for this aeroplane based on UAV technology. And the aircraft that we see now today is the evolution of that after six years worth of development. And now we've got to take the next step in our phase, which is to actually build the aircraft. With true short takeoff and landing capabilities of less than 300 metres, Bihar could even operate from an aircraft carrier. But it's in its role as a green regional commuter aircraft or freighter that it's most likely to be seen first. We look at it more of it goes further than a helicopter, it goes faster than a helicopter, it's quieter than a helicopter. But more importantly, it's a vehicle that everybody can use. This is something that is going to be available to communities, not just in the UK from city to city, but globally. And if you think of some of the expanses of countries where they have to rely on four days worth of ground transport, we're going to have basically a utility aircraft here that not only does PAX duties, but also can change into cargo operations and a whole range of other roles that basically becomes a utility workhorse for people, more or less a flying van. Close to Cambridge and just to the north of London, Faraday hopes to bring jobs and even more. And the Imperial War Museum, which runs the famous museum, is thrilled. Well, we're delighted because Duxford and indeed the Imperial War Museums at Duxford is all about maintaining the heritage into the future and for future generations. And one of the key challenges of that is keeping it relevant. And what better way of keeping it relevant than seeing the future unfold next door and involving the two together? So do you think it's going to be possible when, when the kids come to spend their day here that they're going to be able to go and have a sneak peek at what Neil's up to in that hangar? We really hope so. We've got a very progressive STEM agenda here um, and we're really keen that actually all generations can see what's happening in the future as well as part of the attraction. The land around Duxford is owned by Cambridge University's Gonville and Caius College. 400 years ago when uh, a lady called Joyce Franklin gave the estate of Duxford to the college. Um, more recently, just 100 years ago, part of that estate became the aerodrome here at Duxford. So actually the, the college's story with, uh, with the aerodrome starts a long time ago. But now we're at an inflection point in, area, in aviation, it seems to me. Uh, gen general aviation and smaller aircraft, ecological uh, features to ensure that it's sustainable, and technology is central to that. Cambridge University, the colleges in Cambridge, they've got such a deep reputation in technology. This is a number of themes coming together for this college. So do you see things like uh, bringing um, Faraday here is actually going to help with knowledge and employment and the future of aviation for this country? Yes, I, absolutely I do. And it's also um, a, a very good example of what we have of the of the businesses that we have plans for here at uh, Duxford, because we have a plan to um, develop an aviation technology park here in association with residential development. So there's the sustainability of employment and residential together. We've identified, identified aviation technology because of that inflection point. Faraday is an absolutely perfect example, showing the demand, showing the need. Neil, you've been at this, as you say, for a good few years. It must be refreshing that the government is now eventually listening. And how is that going to help you? It's fantastic because uh, there's a recognition now that we have to do things cleaner, greener. Uh, and the government's been very, very good recently with some of the announcements of their plans for the future. Uh, we are here to help support that and make sure that it stays right at the forefront of aerospace technology globally. But more importantly, it's here in the UK. We came very close to having to relocate offshore 
and some of these announcements and the new funding that's going to be available is going to help projects like ours keep this project in the UK, create jobs, and bring the UK back into a leading position as an aircraft manufacturer once more. That's fantastic. And then finally, tell us when do you expect us to be able to travel in Bihar? There's the, uh, the age-old question. Most of it comes down to money again, as per usual. Um, funding and is, is key to everything. Uh, the more money you have, the faster you can develop. But at the moment, we're targeting the test flight to be between 2023 and 24. We believe that the aircraft will take about two years to certify under Part 23 CS23 regulations. Again, depending on how streamlined that process becomes. So really, in terms of certification, we should be expecting something around about 2026, where people will hopefully be jumping on these airplanes to fly regionally.